All right. I'm Bob Amos. I'm the chair of Burnham Studios. And I want to very much thank all of you for coming out on a Friday night. We'll be happy it's not pouring rain. We had that earlier today. So, at any rate, last year we had John Kraft do our first social media uh, mentor workshop. And it was a tremendous success. It was very, very valuable. So, it's really great that you're all here tonight. Uh, John, for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> is a full-time artist now. Uh, but for 20 years, he was uh, doing art and also working uh, in the corporate world uh, for such rather well-known companies as Autodesk and Apple. And he is a uh, branding and marketing and social media consultant, sort of part-time now, I think you said, John, uh, really focusing on his art, and focusing to the extent that every year we have a little internal contest where we uh, select, the board of directors selects uh, four or five pieces of art from the registered artist, and uh, then we pick the one that we think would be best uh, from a marketing standpoint, and, certainly quality of the art, uh, to put on the cover of the tour guide. I'm happy to say that this year it's John Kraft's piece. Oh. All right. so, <laughs> he has that uh, celebrity uh, status also. So, okay, I've done my part yep. introducing John, so I'm going to disappear to the back, and John, it's yours. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, incredibly happy to be here for a number of reasons. One, I love talking about art. Um, I love talking about marketing. And as my wife will confirm, I love talking. <laughs> so even if it was, leave out the first two, if it was just talking, I'd, I'd probably be thrilled. But, but no, I'm particularly happy to be here because um, especially you know, at, at this time, I think it's so important for all of us as artists to um, obviously continue to, to do our practice and to develop our work, but to even raise our voices a bit more. And really, in some ways, that encapsulates what social media does. It helps us raise, raise our voices. Uh, I'm going to cover three basic areas this evening. First, I'm going to talk about the why, which is the big why. Why are you in the room? Why does social media matter? Why does marketing as an artist matter to you? We're going to talk about the what. We're going to talk about some of the different social media platforms that exist, how they've evolved over just the last year uh, two years and how they've changed in, in, in their benefits and some of their challenges. And then we're going to talk about some of the how, like what can you physically, what can you actually do between now and specifically and open studios to, to make things happen. So it's easy to get very esoteric about how to use social media and there is that broader story, but I'm also going to try to bring it into things that can be particularly useful between now and open studios for all of you uh, to try to amplify and raise the voice for all of us. So that's, that's the idea. Uh, in terms of format, it is definitely not about me speaking for an hour and a half. I want questions, uh, discussions. If you hear something that doesn't make sense, or if you've had different experience that runs counter to what I might be saying, I, I'd love you to raise your hand and let me know, and we can talk about it, because I think that's really what it's about. And uh, with that, I'll go ahead and, uh, and get started. So uh, the why, the why, why do we care about marketing in general as artists? Because of course there's the, the eternal cliche of artists having real reticence or hesitation or an abhorrence of, of, of marketing. Um, they don't want to go near it, they just want to focus on their craft. And I definitely understand that, but the way I try to um, bridge that or bridge that concern is come back to the fundamental question of why do you all respectively create your work? And you can raise your hand and share it right now. Why do you create your work? Or you can reflect upon it uh, privately. But for me as an artist, I create my work to share it. I create my work to express it and for it to be seen by other people. Um, and that's kind of my inner, inner force or my inner drive. Um, and I do want to at least open it up. Does anyone want to share why they create art? Why do they do it? To make a statement. To make a statement, that's a great, absolutely, especially yes, uh, in these times, there's a lot of statements, statements to be made. Anyone else? Yes? I do a lot of we 
musical art, and I want to make people happy and laugh and smile and forget all the other issues. <laughs> exactly. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I sat down uh, uh, to write out a business plan uh, some time back, and of course, you have to have a mission statement. <coughs> you have a mission statement. And I kept thinking about it, and you know, you, you end up start with mission statements that are like a few paragraphs long. You're like, no, what do I want to do? And, and my work is tends to be whimsical as well. And I wrote down, I want to make people happy. And I thought, well, gee, that's, I mean, it's easy to wake up and go to work in the morning when your mission statement is to try to make people happy. Um, I had a friend not too long ago remind me that that happens to be Disney's. The huge corporation that is Disney, their mission statement is to make people happy. So, you know, so, so we, all, we all have this, this, um, this why. Why, why. Why do we create art? And this idea of, of creating and sharing with people. The whole purpose of effectively marketing your, your work, and that includes the uh, category of the use of social media, the idea is to share it with more people more effectively. That's it. So marketing is not this kind of you know, evil, gee, you're selling out, what are, you, what are you thinking, you shouldn't be doing that. It is just an extension of this primal driving force that, that many artists have, which is to create either a statement or to make people happy and to have that impact amplified. And that's really it. Uh, and then specific to social media, um, you know, the phrase word of mouth has been around, you know, forever. And traditionally word of mouth marketing or advertising was about, you know, encouraging people to advocate what you have. In, in whatever, whatever product you might have, it's just encouraging people to tell their friends, hey, yeah, I really trust this, this, this guy came to my home I really trust his work, or this woman helped my uh, my my friend with this uh, with this uh, particular issue, and she's fantastic. Go to her. And social media uh, is basically word of mouth on steroids. That's what it is, and uh, it can be used as as most most things that are powerful. They can be used for good or for evil, right? So and I'm sure everyone in this room has examples of how uh, good examples of what they've seen on social media and how it's brought people together and how it's help to drive liberation in some countries and how it's come to identify certain um, issues. And, uh, and then they've seen the downside of social media. So it's, it's, a, it's a powerful thing. And for us as artists, I view it as an incredibly powerful and positive tool. Uh, the old days of uh, you know, only <coughs> working on your art and just focusing on that and finding that, that one gallerist or, or a, a assembly of, of of gallerists that take on the representation. That model, it still exists in, in many regards and it still can work in many ways. But I think what you'll find is this, this, this wonderful um, payoff, as it were, of directly engaging with people around your art and getting that immediate feedback. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful, um, it's a wonderful uh, feeling. And it kind of, it, it gives me, it reminds me that I need to pause here and just a show of hands, how many of you currently use social media in any way, shape, or form to s share your work? That's fantastic, excellent. And that's, and it, five years ago, and I have, I, I've been talking about social media for over five years and, and meeting with artists. There was a time when that was a, a few hands went up, but it wasn't, it wasn't too many. How many of you have a personal profile page on Facebook? How many of you have a business, dedicated business page on Facebook? Okay. Very good. And thank you. That helps me quite a bit. So um, what's wonderful, I, I, I remember in the late 90s, I, I was going around uh, convincing people that they needed websites. I was doing graphic design and web design. And I remember that there was that window of time where you had to convince people that they actually needed one. And it's, uh, it's, what's nice is there's certainly been a tipping point as it comes to social media and the fact that we uh, we all need to engage with it. So, uh, does anyone else want to share some of the reasons why they create their work? Anything that's not been touched on in terms of sharing, or does anyone still very much hold on to that feeling that look, I want to create my work. I'm not interested in in the marketing piece. There you go. And now the wonderful thing is there's uh, folks like me walking the planet that that kind of like to do it and. Some many much younger than I that are just out of out of school or, or looking for um, projects or, or reference material, and and they're fairly easy easily to identify. 
and it's just <coughs> flat out hate it. Like you hate the, and there are those people, and by the way, it's a valid way to feel. You're entitled to say, I want to focus on my work. I don't want to deal with this other stuff. That's not an invalid uh, emotion or, or feeling. There are people out there that can help you can, and can do a really great job with it. And they can, you can meet with them once a week or once a month and say, I'm working on these five pieces. These are my social media channels. Um, make it happen. You know? And you don't have to find someone like me that, 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 that does consulting to do it. You can find someone that just understands the platforms and, and can make it happen for you. Um, so I've kind of already transitioned from the, you know, the why, the big why do, we, why do we care about marketing, why, why should we care about social media, um, into the what. So I've already talked a little bit about Facebook. Uh, how many of you have also have an Instagram account? Very good. Well, that's, that's the last meeting. With you. That's the last meeting. <laughs> Very good. Right. Very good. Uh, and then how many of you are on Twitter? Now, any platforms that I've not mentioned that you folks are experimenting with? Use of interest, Pinterest. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Very good. So, uh, you heard me mention with Facebook, I asked specifically, do you have a profile page? Uh, do you have a dedicated business page? And this is a good example of how quickly uh, social media can evolve and change over time. Uh, there was a time where if people said, I don't have a Facebook business page, I was immediately saying, You've got to do that, you've got to get on it, it's a great way to go, there's all these benefits to having it, and some of those benefits certainly still exist, but as Facebook has, has well certainly after they went, you know, filed their IPO, and because of their business model, they've taken what used to be a pretty open organic reach, meaning free reach to the people that you are connected with, and they've followed that down significantly. Uh, for a corporation, for example, and this, these are real numbers, for a corporation that has, say, a million connections on a business page, um, the organic reach can be as low as 3%. So if they have a million connections and they post something and they don't put any money behind that post, they will probably hit as, as little as 3% of those connections. Whereas the reach that you'll see on your profile page, your personal profile page, is still better, it's still um, superior. And unless you're in a position to put a, a fair amount of money behind a business page in terms of promoting your posts, I tend to say, if you have a business page, that's great, you can cultivate it, you can still support it. Um, but if you haven't started one yet, I say, especially in this, again, if we're looking at this near-term um, focus on Marine Open Studios, just make use of your, your personal page. Um, now, people mentioned Pinterest. I'd like, love, oh, please, you have a question? But when you say a fair amount of money, what's a fair amount of money? Thousands? That's a fair point. Um, it really depend, it depends on the number of connections you have and what you're trying to do. For I'll give you a, a concrete example. You can reach, the, the average, C, okay, this is going to sound a little techno speak, but it's the way I can answer your question. The, the average CPM, CPM is cost per thousand impressions on Facebook, is roughly $10. It can be all over the map. But roughly, to get a thousand impressions of whatever you put up, meaning a thousand views, it's roughly ten dollars, and that gives you an idea. You can kind of extrapolate that and say, well, you know, what does that what does that do for me? Um, in terms of valuing those views, uh, that gets into um, how you target. For example, if you had a business page and you had a thousand connections, just a thousand connections to that business page, um, and you only wanted to target those people that you were already connected to. You can kind of do the math and say, this is what it would take me on average to reach those people for any given post. But then you have to start doing, you start thinking about the frequency of how often are you posting, <coughs> how many new posts. It's not just $10 once, it's $10 every time. Yeah. And the analogy I, I use with folks is it's, it's very similar to direct mail, where you're spending money typically on Facebook to acquire connections to your business page. So that's the equivalent of buying the mailing list. If you're looking at it from a direct mail standpoint, you're buying a mailing list. Well, now Facebook wants you to pay postage. You need stamps. If you want to mail something, you can create something. You can create this beautiful letter. But if you want to actually mail it to people, you have to pay. And that is Facebook's business model. If you post something into your, uh, on your business page, and you actually want it to reach a decent number of people, you have to put a little bit of money behind it. Now, and that's why I tend to say, if you don't already have the business page, Focus your efforts on connections to your, your profile page. There's, a, there's a, a number of caveats to that. If you have, if you're like, and many of us these days, myself included, we have, I'll just use the phrase segmented lives. We have maybe the, the day job or we have 
the Facebook page where we, we have pictures of the kids and do we want to put our art on the same thing with the pictures of the kids. There's all those, that, a myriad of reasons why you might decide to have a separate page or not. Um, but strictly in terms of the cost of it and what's needed in terms of these investment, uh, I tend to say, you know, if you're in Marin and you're an artist and you have a certain, no, a good number of friends you're connected with uh, in the community, post it to your, post, create the post for your page and, and kind of go that route. Um, I haven't talked at all yet about the content, and I, and I will certainly, but the thing that, that really, what it all comes down to, and it, it kind of goes back to the why, the, the way you're successful in anything you're going to be doing in social media, it doesn't matter what the platform is, it's just being authentic and telling a story. And the story is you. You are the story. Uh, and the work that you're creating is the story. Um, and if you follow that, you, you kind of just naturally create good content. If you sit there, there's no magic to it. It's not, gee, what should I say? Or is this the right way to do it? It's just, if you're working on a new piece of art that you care about, take a photograph of it. Explain why you care about it put it up and you'll be amazed that th that will perform way better than you know hey 10 percent off now through Wednesday I mean that's you know I've been known to do those posts but uh, um, so please yes go ahead so what's the point of Facebook point of, ah, that's great because it kind of goes back to that goes back to the why the point of Facebook is to share your work Okay, so I, I want to, this is important. I'm, I'm actually incredibly glad you're here because I want to understand. You no, know, I'm, I'm really being very, very genuine about this. Uh, I, that's not coded at all. So when you, when when I say uh, when you, you're like, you know, share. Do you, do you? Here's, here's you my experience. Share? Here's why I said that. Yeah, go ahead. There's some professional likers out there. They're very nice. It's nice to hear from them. Mm -hmm. But that's all they do. You know, that's their something to pass the time. Mm -hmm. What's the point? Professional likers mean people that are being compensated to. Uh, Housebound folks. Oh, oh sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and no. then you see they say the same thing to everybody you know. Yeah. What's the point? I guess the, the short version of the point is a $5,000 commission to an investment banker in Manhattan who saw my work on Facebook. That's go. the short version. Not getting to him. I'm sorry? It's not getting to him, or I'm not hearing back. I, I, I don't. So my, I'm giving you the example that Facebook matter. Facebook counts for on a couple of different levels. There's a monetary level, and then there's just the the kind of more basic why do you create work. And there's two different ways of looking at this. And it's not dissimilar from the way a corporation looks at at their marketing. That's like the branding thing. Like, hey, I feel I feel really good that you feel good about our company. And then there's what's referred to as more demand gen, like you're actually generating revenue. Same thing with art. Sometimes just having a lot of people say nice things about your art means something to, to some artists. Some artists like to receive that feedback, what they're doing. Now, it's okay if you want more than that. If you're thinking, hey, that's nice, I like that you liked it, but I'd really like it if you bought it. <laughs> I had a, a, I get that. A, a, a message from a lady who said, oh, I love your work, and I've been enjoying it every day. She printed it out and put it on her file. Okay. Sure, sure. Oh, you're, 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 well, it's funny. I, I, that's actually there's a funny story. I used to print, uh, I used to print compositions out of five by seven cards. I had this one piece of Lombard Street that I did in like '98, um, and I, would, I had this postcard, and I would send them out to people for free. You know, if they join my mailing list, hey, here's a postcard, and I would get emails. Hey, thank you so much. We framed your postcard. It's in the kitchen. <laughs> and and you're right. That will always happen, and there will be the people that take the that that pull your image off at 72 dots per inch and they print it and they put it in their cubicle. And there's a couple ways of reacting to that. There's, gee whiz, you, you've, you've stolen from me and, and how dare you. And then there's also, either this person doesn't get it or they just like the work and they have it up. And the idea is on the whole, on balance, the upside of sharing your work broadly with people far surpasses the one-off person that prints it out and puts it in their cubicle. I had someone who did that, by the way. They had, had a, one of my pieces they had up in their cubicle. They printed it out, and I knew it. They, even told me they, had, they didn't think anything of it. They told me they did it. And four years later, they bought a large piece. So you, you, never, you never know. And, and, um, and, before, and I, I do I want, to, um, I want to take all the other questions, but I, I appreciate um, 
the cynicism and why, and I appreciate the, um, the questions, because you're not, you're not alone by, by a long shot. And, and I appreciate the fact that you came here to at least kind of hear, well, why is this I'm just reporting my experience. Well, okay, that's, that's a fair point. Um, and I actually I'd love to talk. I, I actually love to talk to you more afterwards as well, because I I uh, I'm just hoping you'll tell us how to turn it into. <laughs> oh, I I, I, will, I will do that. How's that for a promise? I'll help you. Promise. <laughs> Don, yes. In the process of speaking today, um, I don't get where the hell Facebook is going. I use it all the time. I'm on it socially. I use it for my art. I stopped using my business page. I'm just using my personal one. Right. And um, the oddest things happen. I don't know where it goes, how it gets there, who the hell sees it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm mm -hmm. hoping you can explain that to me. Go well, back to you and the Red Sox. It's <laughs> as far as it, and, and again, there's, how should I say it? There's, and I understand what you're saying. And then this, what you're touching on is one of the, one of the nuances or the differences between a business page and a, a personal mm -hmm. profile page. One of the things that's nice about the business page is you can tell, you know, who's looking at your posts, how old they are, where they live, all that stuff. And if that's important to you, then maybe you're leaning back to the business page. Uh, in terms of the profile page and where and where things show up, I come back to the most basic thing, which is if you're authentically sharing stories about your work, and if the people you're connected to are responding to it, if it's resonating then it's going to have a reaction. And that reaction can go from a like, which is of a wide range of value depending on, on how you look at it, all the way to people saying, is this piece available? How much is it? Can I buy, can, do you ship internationally? And you can go from a like from someone who's just at home liking stuff, all the way to someone who's saying, I want to buy this today. And it can be anywhere in between. Um, if you see things happening repeatedly, they're a little bit odd. You might say, you know, what am I posting? Am I, am I posting? Well, again, it can be a million reasons why people are reacting. It can be who you're connected to, all, all sorts of things. And what I would say too, but the benefit of you, the huge benefit of social media more broadly compared to the old school of, of online display, what they refer to as display advertising or banner advertising. Back in the day, you'd have like creative meetings for a month. You got copywriters, graphic designers. You'd meet with the media agency. You'd place your buy. You'd run. You'd, you'd, you'd um, run the ads across the sites that you had picked out. Then you'd wait 15 days to get the stats back on how they were performing, and then you would change depending on what kind of performance you were getting. Now you can do all of that within the span of 24 hours. You can create something, put it up. See how people react to it. And this is paid or unpaid, frankly. Um, you can see how people are reacting. Are they liking it? Are they clicking through to? It? Are they are they are they pursuing the behavior you want them to pursue? And if they're not, then you can try something else. If is, if you're putting up a static image, I'll give you a, a very specific example, a contrast. If you put up a, a static image of a of a of a photograph of a piece, and it's just a flat image of a piece, and you're saying, learn more. Okay, that's one post. May see how that reacts. Then you have another uh, post where you've got an image of that same piece being held by someone who purchased it in a gallery, holding it in the gallery, and you're inviting them to learn more about the rest of that collection. Other example, you're to have a video of yourself discussing your process in creating the piece. Those are three very, very different types of posts about the exact same subject. And you'll see different degrees of response to that. People tend to engage more with things that they find more engaging to say, you know, to make a circular uh, argument. So the, the sum of, of your question or your the thing you raised is just keep experimenting. See, see what, what resonates with people. Um, I, 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 keep, I might have mentioned a couple times this concept of story or, and the story is you, the narrative is you. It, it's definitely not about you know, random serial postings of paintings. Like, here's, here's the image of the day, and here it is, and the title is this. Tomorrow, here's the image of the day, and the title is this. Now you can do that, and that's better than nothing, but say something about the piece. Say something about the process behind it. Uh, say why it matters to you. Ask people to express what, what they think about it. 
There's a number of ways you can engage with people, and it's all it's all trial and error, right? But Facebook does not determine where one's commentary or photographs go it, it, by it, some predetermined it does. geometric. It does. It, does. Yeah. it controls completely. Oh, so, yeah. so on, on even on just the profile page, not your business page, the way you have your privacy settings, privacy settings set up, um, controls the potential audience of distribution. Um, you've got your connection, so that's part of it. Like if you have if you have ten connections and you have your privacy set up where only those ten people are going to see it, that's it. And not even those ten might see it because Facebook's only going to really, uh, show things to a certain number of people because they can't have everyone's posts being seen by everyone they're connected to. It just it's too overwhelming. So they have an algorithm, not just yeah. just. I mean, they have they have well they have more than one algorithm, but they have ways of determining is this relevant? Is it being um, is it engaging content? And you'll see when you, put, I, and I, I see it, it's just, you'll, you'll post one thing and some of it goes down to the time of day and that's a whole other discussion, but you'll post something and like three hours later there's one like from your aunt. And you're like, I love my aunt, but I was really hoping for like this, I hope this was gonna go viral and take off and it doesn't happen. And then you'll post something else and it does take off and people start sharing it, people start talking about it. Um, and you start engaging with those people that are commenting on it, and it starts a dialogue. When it comes to, and that's the thing, getting back to the pot of gold, or whatever you want to refer to, uh, the, the monetizing of all this. Um, when it comes to fine art, when it comes to something uh, tactile and real, and something that's not commodity, not a widget, it's hard. It's hard to make that sale online. It's not impossible to make that sale. Most of my sales are to people online, and half of them are not even in the country. They've never physically seen my work. But you create the opportunity for them to view it as a real thing, as a, and, and, to back, and to get to know you as the artist creating it. Um, and that can help start the conversation that leads to, to the sale. I, I, you know, I threw out that, um, I kind of fired back at you, perhaps unfairly, with that you know, five thousand dollar commission in Manhattan. That wasn't like I'm not seeing the connection. Uh, so, uh, so uh, that would yeah. be nice. That would be nice. I'm, I'm giving you an example of what happened. So, I, let, let me. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll elaborate a little bit. Selling art online, typically, especially if it's it's more valuable art, it's a conversation, right? The idea of the Facebook component is to start the conversation. And uh, and I, I think it's a worthwhile example. So, I'll give you the full story, and you can you can. Uh, but I have a, I have a Facebook business page and I have a profile page. I was running ads in um, they were targeted in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Santa Fe, and New York, and the ads were just a photograph of a piece, uh, inviting people to connect. Not even buy it. With the the call to action was not buy this. It was connect with me on Facebook. What was your call to action? Connect with me on Facebook, like my page, like 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 this page. I think at the time it might have even been become a fan. That was back when they had the different uh, um, naming for it. So this woman in Manhattan connected with my Facebook page. Uh, I reached out directly and thanked her for doing so because you can message people that like your page. And uh, she wrote back and she said, "I, I thank you. I, I have looked at your website. Do you do do you do commissions?" Do you do original commissions? Uh, and I said, absolutely. And she said, well, um, I, what, is there any particular subject matter that you're uh, interested in? She said, well, you know, let me give it some thought. Well, I went to her Facebook page, because we're on Facebook. She loves skiing, and she loves champagne. I wrote back to her, in, all inside Facebook. And I said, Apres Ski and Vigaluth I just gave her the title. And she said, let's do it. So it turned into a, and I'll be, I'll be Completely specific. It was a forty-five hundred dollar commission that I did completely virtually. I, I went through review cycles with her, like you would in an ad agency doing any kind of design work. We worked. We basically collaborated on the uh, composition together. I delivered it to her along with uh, a bottle of Oakley Co. and two flutes uh, by mail, and that came from a conversation that was started by a Facebook ad. And the click of that Facebook ad, the cost for that click was probably twenty cents. So you communicate so, with her through private message? Correct, that's correct, yeah. Uh, and Facebook is very um, fickle. The, the one day you can do this, and the next day you can't do it, or it's harder to do, but generally speaking, you can connect with those folks. 
I think what, and, and I, I kind of was getting into it, but it really is about sharing your story, building the connections, and starting a conversation. Uh, there are very, there are people that will see a, a piece of work on a website and will say, I'm gonna buy that, and they just click through and they buy it, and that's that's great, and if it's a, if it's someone that, um, with, with a real established career like, like Tom, or if it's someone that they have a familiarity with, or if the price point is lower, then they're more willing to just pull the trigger. But typically, if it's if it's new artists, it's an emerging artist, um, and they're not familiar with them, they want to have a bit of a back and forth and a, and a communication. Yes? Um, when you post a painting, say on your business page, do you always put your um, website address on it so they can click on it? Absolutely, absolutely, um, and that's a that's a great point. Um, and what you do can depend on 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 what behavior you're trying to drive um, and what you're and what you're trying to support. But you're absolutely correct. Now, one of the things, and this this is kind of you know, the basic marketing too, is if you want to be very specific in what you're asking the person to do, if you're trying to get a behavior to happen, and then you want the payoff to be very specific too. So if you're sharing a, a piece, it's a still life. Um, you know, for such and such a year, and you want, are really trying to get people to buy the medium-sized uh, print that has an edition of 50, you want to deliver them, not to your main website, you want to deliver them right to that, to that information. Um, and it's all, it's all on the board. Um, you, someone in the back, you got a question as well? Oh, I did, it was just regarding the difference between your um, business side and your personal side, yeah. which is when you post on, <coughs> When you post something to your business site, but then share it to your personal site, are you losing anything as opposed to just posting it directly to your personal site? No. Okay, you're not. So, so uh, no, you're right. So, in some ways, you're kind of helping yourself. So, if you got if you got overlap, which a lot of people do, if you, if you have a business page and a profile page, sometimes you have an overlap where you have a number of your friends. Or I, I use air quotes. I feel like Sean Spicer with air quotes, but um, <laughs> last reference. Okay. Um, but. Uh, you, you're actually helping yourself a little bit because then you, you're going to get that engagement with that audience through your organic reach, and not through what you're paying. See, does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. um, if it didn't make sense, I guess. So, so you're yeah, I know that it really brings up the number of views because you get the view number on the business page. Yeah. But I, I just wondered if it was like, um, if you knew specifically. Like a very, if it's still getting out to a very limited number when you're sharing it from a business page as opposed to if you're just posting. No, no, that, that I, I, I think anything that's natively shared is going to do better typically. Um, now, one thing that's interesting with the business page is it's not, you know, I, it's it's the analogy to direct mail is pretty accurate. But one thing that I've noticed that, that can work for those of you that do have business pages is you can create a post and you don't have to go out there and set your ad budget to like a hundred dollars. You can do do the equivalent of like it's kind of like you got the your post is the bobsled team, right? You just gotta give it a little push. You can put like five bucks behind it, ten dollars behind it, just to give it a little push. And if it's got any inherent um, authentic um, value, meaning is is it an engaging post? Was it is it a good post to put it simply? Um, then it can kind of take off organically from there. So essentially, you're you're using, you're using a bit of money uh, to kind of like time the pump and kind of push out the door. Yes. But I have, I have been told by other friends who use it a lot that once you put money into your business page, then then Facebook really wants you to do that, and then they're less likely to right. allow your you know to give you any more push for free. Yeah, that's I mean, it's it's I can see why that would be a theory. I can see why people might feel that way, but the business model for for Facebook with business pages is it's it's almost they almost they, almost, they did come out and basically said you're not, you're get, not getting really any organic reach. I mean there might be a little bit, but it's, they want you to pay for that reach because it's considered a business. It's a, it's a it's like advertising. It's a marketing channel, and they want you to pay for it. It's it's there it's there to to um for them to be monetized. Um, so but I'm not surprised that you've heard things like that. It's almost it's almost like the urban myth thing. Like you know what, the second I paid them they. They started, you know, okay. charging more, and, and uh, but I don't think that actually happens. Yes. Um, so when I go on Facebook um, and I post yeah. things, I go to friends and friends of friends. Mm -hmm. So should I be doing more than that with my work? I do with friends and friends of friends now. Oh yes. A lot yeah. of my artwork. Yeah, absolutely. And I notice that people 
have different responses. Mm -hmm. Some will make a comment, some will say like, some will say love, you know, whatever it is. Right. Nobody says I don't like it. I think they just like it. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm doing with friends and friends and friends. Sure. No, but is there a, a, a wider reach I should be doing? Or, or no, just to no, what you're doing is great. And what you're doing is, is that's actually the most typical way that I set up my, my target. Okay. And I don't and I'm like, well, we can get specific. That's a, that's a great question. Well, it's because um, I really believe that even with the person who prints out your picture, yeah. and puts it up somewhere, you never know who's going to come in and see that picture. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Like, oh, I mean, that, yeah. I mean, the the, uh, the the cliche quote from uh, from Mr. Steve Jobs, uh, <laughs> who I, I well, uh, he, he was he would say you never can connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking back, and you oh. never know. All I, all, my entire approach to creating art and sharing it is just to create as many dots as possible. And some of some things you can control, some things you can't okay. control. Um, please, hold on a little bit. Let me you. answer your question. Um, I'm just noticing a lot of artists who are doing well connecting on Instagram. And mm -hmm. I wonder if at some point you might help us compare what you absolutely. can accomplish on Facebook versus Instagram. Abs absolutely, yeah. And, it's, I, and, I, and I like the fact that this is kind of turning into more of a conversational <laughs> thing. And it's a good, th this, is, this is ostensibly the, the what portion, right, of the talk. So we haven't talked really about Instagram too much. Um, Instagram really has come into its own. It is primarily a visual, image-driven uh, social channel as opposed to the copy or the commentary that you would associate with it. Um, the biggest nuance, or the biggest contrast that I, beyond what I just shared, which is one is more about perhaps telling a story, like Facebook, you actually can write some copy, some text, uh, whereas Instagram is very much focused on the image. Oh, you is, can write copy. Oh, you can, no, no you, you can write copy, yeah. but in terms of its strength or its emphasis, the emphasis of Instagram is not the copy, it's the image, but the other nuance that's very powerful but diff distinct is the use of hashtags. Whereas you can, you can technically use hashtags on, on Facebook. You can even now use hashtags on LinkedIn, for example. But in terms of the platform that makes the most use of it, apart from Twitter, uh, it's, it's, it's Instagram. And what's the point of hashtags? There is like, that's the open question. What's the bloody point, right? The point is, is that, and, and I should, I'll take a couple steps back. What, what is a hashtag? I'll just, I shouldn't make the assumption everyone knows what that is. Uh, if you make a post and then you append to the post something that has a pound sign and a string of, of a single, it's a single word or a string of multiple words. Like abstract art or? Abstract art, contemporary art, it's precisely. Uh, MOS 2017 as an example. Um, you're, you're appending to your post this hashtag that helps aggregate it within that platform so that if someone searches on that hashtag or has their system set up to automatically filter for that hashtag, you're pulled into that aggregation, into that feed. Um, if you close please. it, I'm going to hit you. <laughs> oh, we both had our hands up. And since the beginning. Well, yeah. I have an Instagram question. Yes. Two, two of them. Instagram, and you're going to hate me. <laughs> Instagram um, offers you the ability to promote your Correct. posts. Yeah. To what? To promote to your promote posts. To promote or to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to pay to yeah. promote your posts. So is that worthwhile? I don't know what happens. I did it once, and I don't know. Yeah, it's it's another it's another uh, way of, of reaching more people um, because Facebook owns Instagram. You can actually syndicate things. Well, you can you can syndicate from Facebook to Instagram. So you can be within Facebook creating the advertising, and it will syndicate automatically to Instagram. And then the second one I have about Instagram is a lot of followers. You know, people they'll say they follow me. They'll offer me free thousands yeah. of free followers. That's spam. Yeah. So what's that about? It's, that's it's spam. spam. Oh yeah, watermark. Yeah, that's um, that's a very personal you know thing. But it, but the spirit of your question. So the question was, should you include watermarks in your images of your artwork that you put online? Uh, my, I personally do not. Um, because I think it sometimes can interfere with with appreciating the work. Um, if you there's no there's no right answer to that. It's really how you feel about your work and how um, and your philosophy on on having it out there. 
Um, and watermark marks can take many forms. It can be something that obscures the, the, the creative itself, or it can be a little copyright. Right. It's, it's whatever you feel is, is you want to do. The only one caveat there is if you're doing Facebook advertising, is if once you exceed a certain amount of text or what they perceive to be text, they'll, leave, they'll reduce the reach of your, of your thing, of your, your post. <coughs> if you have too much text in the image that you post, um, they either will not approve the ad, or they will approve it, but it will have less reach because they don't want text to fill that. So, sorry. Uh, John, you gave a hypothetical a little while ago about uh, pushing your, your Facebook uh, business page by paying $10. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, you'd get a thousand more uh, connections. So impressions. Impressions. Not connections. So, what is okay. That? So what are the views? How do, you, how do they choose? Who, who views those thousand times? I mean, it's it's the, so it's on, a, on it's the targeting. So that within within your Facebook business page, when you promote a post, or if you're using the ads manager, and I want to I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, a timeout here. I'm talking about a lot of very technical stuff. Yeah. Um, if you go so my website's johncraft.com. If you go johncraft.com forward slash m o s, you will get a link to a page, and it's a group of pages that has all this information including a link under one of the pages to the Facebook blueprint, and it gets into the nitty gritty of this is how you target, this is how it works, this is how you do testing, all this thing. But every, and, and I should have, and I apologize for not saying this at the outset, you know, that I didn't have handouts. The reason I don't have handouts is one, I didn't want to, you know, uh, uh, use, use a lot of paper unnecessarily, <coughs> but all this information is freely available on my website. Um, but it has, to answer your question specifically though, you can decide who sees it. You can, for example, um, the most, the, the, I don't know why I use this example often, but if you, if you, if you want to target people in, to, in the south of France between the age of 25 and 26 that uh, own a home between three and five million dollars <laughs> that like pizza. Oh, so you, you, can you, can it, you can you can customize it yeah. to, to a group or Correct. Uh, a demographic rather. Correct, yeah. And, 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 and uh, why, would you, why might you want to do that? You know, I mentioned earlier my example of uh, targeting, um, I was targeting uh, San Francisco, LA, Santa Fe, New York, just picking some art hubs. You can, depending on the piece, you might pick Miami, depending on, uh, again, I have a piece that's about the, the, Gi uh, the Giants, Giants Stadium. So I'm gonna target people in San Francisco that like the Giants. And you're just trying to put it in front of people that feel that connection. Um, so that's, how do you get those people? Do you do a search at the top bar for people who like the Giants, or do you do a Google search for that? Or? It's actually, it, it's within the actual advertising setup. Um, okay. And it is, it, it, it can be a little daunting, because if you've never done the advertising before, it's a little tricky. Okay. But there's a link, again, under, uh, and the way, so, and I, I gave you the, that one link, it's, if you just write down one link, that will get you to the site that has all this information. Okay. But I've broken down the pages into why, um, what and how, and then I have a special page for MOS from Red Open Studios. Okay. It's MOS very 2017? Or just, just MOS, okay. just MOS. And, um, and it has a lot of that information. Facebook has this, as you can imagine, they have this very robust uh, site. They call it their blueprint, and it goes into excruciating detail of, of how you can do that different stuff. Um, but simply, yes, you can kind of search for search <coughs> and select people based on their interests, their age, their income, where they live. Um, and the most immediate, to, to give a, um, an immediate example from Red Open Studios, you know, you can target people that live within 50 miles of your city, within Marin, um, that have expressed an interest in, in visual arts or collecting art. And, and you can do that. Sorry. Why would you encourage us not to get a business page in time for MLS? Does it take longer to develop it or something? It, in, terms of, in terms of publishing it, you could go home and probably publish one this evening. <coughs> But it, it, the value of it in terms of the number, the number of native connections you have, you know, it takes time to build up connections to the page, and sometimes it's, it's, that has its own uh, value in starting that conversation. Having said that, you could start a business page this evening <coughs> and be advertising tomorrow. I mean, you, it would simply give you the platform to advertise um, from. Uh, but in terms of building a, connect, a, a collector base or a, or a a host of connections, it takes a little bit more time. It's kind of like, it's that buying, it's the spend to get the, um, 
the mailing list. So it's are you allowed to sell on the personal page? Or they have rules against that. They have rules, express rules against it. Um, it it's it's actually in their. It, it's a very. It's a great question. Uh, in their in their terms of service, technically, if you use it to sell things, they can technically shut down your account. They're not. It, this is this is me kind of. Uh, I don't. This is my opinion. Uh, if you're someone saying, I have an open studio is coming up, please come to my open studio where I'll have a, uh, a number of my originals and some limited editions available, you're, you're good. If you're peppering it every day, like trying to sell, you know, who knows what for 20% off and you're just peppering the hell out of it, you probably still wouldn't get uh, reprimanded or, or shut down. It's, it's only if it reached some incredible volume. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, so, how how do you know how much of your artwork gets on other people's feed when they like it? Because sometimes I get things that say, so and so like this, it's sure. not that they shared it. Mm -hmm. What determines that? What determines whether they see it or your ability to well, know? Yeah, like how, how many of my pieces will go on to not my friends, but friends of friends right. without the sharing? With like, does that happen or is that something that's only it's a great. It's actually a great question. Um, if he, if a friend or someone likes something, that depending on how they have it, and a lot of this is driven by how people have their privacy settings set up. Um, you may very well have it show up in someone else's feed and say so and so liked this, uh, and that can happen. But to get to the heart of your question, if you if you really want to know with any specificity how many people are seeing it and generally what the demographics are of those people, that's through things you can post on the business page. Um, I, I'm just always very mindful when it, when it comes to these presentations, particularly in, in the lead up to something that's so close, there's, you know, what can you do tonight, tomorrow, to build towards um, Reno Open Studios? Mm -hmm. And that's where I'd say, if you don't have the established business page, make the most of your, your personal profile page. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best bet. And, and using all three, Instagram, personal, and business page, what? Yeah, uh, absolutely. it's a great question. So, it, it, and, and, uh, and this is this actually speaks very well to this kind of uh, this what what section. So there's a number of, of platforms. There's there's the, and people have mentioned uh, Pinterest, which is wonderful. Um, I was um, briefly, I, you know, Pinterest is a place, of course, where you can um, digitally post things to your to your wall. Like, it's kind of like you have a collection of things that you care about. It can be I care about. Um, pottery, and so I created the, the Rin Pottery Pinterest page, and I find things from all over the, the, the web, and I post them there, and people can follow that page and read through and learn about it. Um, it but for me as an artist, I've, 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 uh, I've not made that much use of it. I, I, I like the fact that other people can post my, my stuff. Um, I've made it easier on my website for people to post things to their Pinterest boards, but I've not used it as a major push. Um, but to get back to, to um, the core of your question, so there's all these different platforms. Where should one focus? If, if, if someone said, okay, I'm on social media, where, where should I, I put my time? I'm gonna say split it between Facebook and Instagram. Um, I haven't really talked a lot about Twitter. Twitter is there, people still, some people still use it. I think it has, it has, it has uh, less and less impact. It's turned into very much kind of a, um, a broadcast platform for the famous or infamous. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, and I, and I mean, that's the same. There's notable examples, but really in terms of, of uh, if, you have, if you have a Twitter account, you've got like you know, 3,000 followers, and you know, go for it, you know, don't, don't waste it. But if, in terms of uh, you know, time is precious, and, and in terms of where you spend your time, um, I would say it's it's Facebook and Instagram. And the Instagram part, because it's just it's so, so much about the visuals, mm -hmm. and it so lends itself to that that visual storytelling. Um, and the other, and this is a good time too to, to mention these these kind of these. Um, there's a lot of different tools online that supposed <laughs> to syndicate out to all of these things. Like you create one post, and it pushes it to everything. Mm -hmm. And I have always hated those things. And the reason I have hated those is every platform is different. It's different in terms of how it treats hashtags. It's different in terms of the different other, the entities that you might tag in your posts. Um, a specific example. So Marine Open Studios on Twitter is Marine Open Studio, at Marine Open Studio. 
Marine Open Studios on Facebook is at Marine Open Studios. If I centrally syndicated a post, it would, it would miss part of that poll because it would be using the wrong tag for that group. Um, if I tried to use all the hashtags I use on Instagram and, and put it to Twitter, it would be truncated at 140 characters. There's an, and even though Twitter went to the point where it's like accepting posts beyond the 140 characters, it's just not, that's not what the format, that's not what it's for. So I, again, in terms of focus for everyone in the room, I would suggest focusing on Facebook and, and Instagram. In terms of within Facebook, I, I've already kind of, we've talked about the business page and, and personal page. Yes. Just uh, going back a little bit, on Facebook, <laughs> you mentioned that you usually tag your posts or you usually put friends and acquaintances. Is there a specific advantage to doing that over global? Because I've tried to share posts from other people onto specific pages and the permissions won't allow it because it's only their friends and acquaintances. Right. Well, there's a distinction between promoting a post with a targeting of friends and friends of friends and actually physically going to friends' pages and posting onto that, those pages. I actually, rec I actually don't recommend doing that. And this kind of gets in that broad area of you know, social media etiquette and what you, you, things you do and don't do. And everyone's got different opinions on what you do or you don't do. Um, I don't you know, go out of my way to post something on someone else's feed. That feed is kind of their, kind of their house. It's kind of like where they live. And I, it's not my job to do that. Um, if they want to share something to their feed, that's great. But, um, but I'm not going to impose that upon them. The, the beginning of your question, as far as you know, why is it nice to do friends and uh, friends of friends when you're doing advertising, is it comes back to this concept of word of mouth and advocacy. If if because what happens is when it does appear in their feed, it'll say, you know, here here's the sponsored post from from uh, so and so, and then it's going to say in a little note, you know, this page liked by you know John Smith or, or what have you, and it's that little endorsement, that little kind of word of mouth, like, oh, well, maybe this is interesting. Maybe I should care about this because John cares about this or Joe cares about this. Um, and that's some of the rationale behind that. You mentioned this idea of like, do just a global push. Now there's global, there's public on a profile page, which I think is smart. If you're trying to share things broadly, something as broadly as possible, <laughs> you post as public. And what that means is if anybody shares it, anyone can see it, right. yeah, which is smart. Awesome. But when it comes to, actual ad targeting through a Facebook business page, uh, specificity is, is really good because you can get a lot of noise. Uh, and, and what's nice is you can, over time, you can really hone in on, on, uh, on what people respond to. I have to, like, most people that, that, I might start with a very broad targeting age-wise on a certain group of art, and then you can go in a day later and say, you know, for people between 45 and, and 55 are performing better. They're, they're be responding more. I can edit the targeting to only target those people. And what does that mean? That means that $10 that I'm gonna spend the next day on the 1,000 impressions, more of that $10 is being spent to the people that actually are gonna to react to it. And this is constant iteration um, that lets you kind of experiment. If, you, if the idea of doing any of that just either bores you or just is just not interesting you to get to that level of specificity, then all you, all you need to worry about is if you have a Facebook page, share authentic, posts about the work you're creating, the story about what you're creating, your preparation for Marin Open Studios, what you're doing to get ready for it. Um, if, you have, if you have a smartphone that takes video, have somebody shoot some video of you talking about your work. If you don't feel comfortable <coughs> doing that, don't do it. But, it, but, it, but, it's just, yeah, but it's one of those things where it, it, having a video of you explaining how you, why you do what you do can be very engaging and it can change things up. I'm sorry. I have another Instagram yes. thing. When I post on Instagram, I have the option to have it show up on my business Facebook yep. page. Mm -hmm. Now I think I should go back into the Facebook and say something about each of those posts. You know, add on to. Well, it's a great it's a great point, and it kind of goes to this concept of do you just do this one point syndication out? And and I think it's worth that extra five minutes or so to go to the different platforms and to and to post things specifically for those platforms. Everyone has, every platform has very specific idiosyncrasies and things that make them work and things that make them not work so well. And um, once you get a feeling for those, it's then you can really kind of have a little bit more. I'm just uh, starting to get a feeling for 
Yeah. Well, that's just it. It is overwhelming, and that's why I, I say, you know, you know, Facebook and Instagram, and just and that. And, and by the way, the one thing you know, I, I have to mention it, um, it's it's not part of this conversation, but I'll very briefly say, and uh, email and postcards and talking to friends. I mean, the, the social media does, cannot or should not exist in a vacuum. All the other things that are traditional things that we do um, should be done. I'm sorry, sorry, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wondered when I post on Instagram and share it to Facebook, sometimes it crops the piece so you can barely see the image, even though I, yeah. I sized it right on Instagram. Do you have any idea how that? Well, Instagram only does a square format. So, so the Instagram images, they, you can shrink things. They, they but I do that, but it's still sometimes it's square. kind of willy-nilly. No. Correct. And, and, and more, more to, and you're exactly right. And more times than not, it's the opposite direction. Like if you post something like a regular, uh, like a four by six image on Facebook and you send it to Instagram, it's going to get truncated because it's making it square, perfectly square. I actually, as, as a, I hesitate to admit this, but like if I'm shooting a piece of art, I'll, I'll actually specifically take photographs in square mode and then in, in portrait mode um, because then I've got them for the different platforms. Actually, um, you can resize it in Instagram. Yes. It, so it's no, not square. But you're, it's exactly, still, you're exactly right, but what's interesting is the preview you get and the framing you get on your phone oh, varies depending on the setting. And, it's, and by the way, there's no right way. The way you're doing it is probably perfect. I mean, it's, it's whatever you, if you end up with something that you're happy with, then that, that's what counts. So you're better off doing, putting square? Oh, well, on Instagram, it's a square, it's a square format. It will, be, it will be put up there as a square, correct? Yeah. You could pad your picture to be square, couldn't you? Absolutely. You can do you can do that, or even within Instagram, you can hit a little thing to resize it and letterbox it. So it, there's ways that, to make it work. It's just and you can also um, just stand back from your piece and take a you know photograph of it. Exactly. So that it's not just all the Absolutely. filling the whole frame. Absolutely. And 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 and, 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 uh, and I mentioned it a couple of times, but like if you have a piece of art. Um, and you, it's it's the funniest thing. We spent a lot of time, especially about doing this new mixed media series, and it's so funny because I finished it with this two-part epoxy resin. It's got this great gloss, and then I go and I, I, I have this wonderful photographer in Oakland, and and I and I have him take a photograph of it and do everything he can to defeat the resin. And I'm like, I spent I spent you know all this time and, and risked you know life and limb putting this resin on, and now I want you to get rid of it anyway. But the point I'm trying to make is. When you're sharing your work online, if you have the choice of sharing a, a actual photograph of the physical piece on a wall in your hands, I would always go with that over the you know the, the, the traditional 2D thumbnail digital image if you if you can do it right because it just translates as something that someone could physically buy. That's what I'm working on. Right, what you just said. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, it's a great, no, I will, I will. So I mentioned I saw, saw a lot of work to folks that have never physically seen, seen, my, seen myself right. in person. People want to feel comfortable about what they buy online, especially if it's something that's a little bit more expensive uh, or it's coming from just this you know, standalone artist. It's not from Amazon, it's just like, you know, who is this person? If you can show them a, a piece, like, I mean, Tom's work, it translates, <coughs> that's just the nature of his work. It works so well just as an image. I could just put up an image of that, and you could say, but this is a really amazing piece. Look at all that detail. But if I put up a photograph of the actual image on the wall, it's easier for someone seeing it to make the connection to, this is something physical that I can buy, that I can hang on my wall. Yeah, with a frame. So you're saying a framed piece to include the frame well, in the image? Yeah, well, yeah, basically. In, in other words, instead, instead of taking that little digital image of, of, oh, just of the, the creative, of the art, if Take you have the frame. ability to show it in its setting, then that's that's just it makes more of a connection. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a friend who paints a lot and he posts always with a frame. Mm -hmm. Even on his website, I think he puts the frame on. Right. Um, but I wanted to ask about the like constant contact or whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, do you feel that's important? I mean, to the, the to, email? to do yeah. Absolutely, and and, 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 it, and, it's, and the question you're asking is completely connected to this whole concept of social media and reach and how do I target. You know, email has been around for a long time, but you know what's wonderful about email is you've got your list of people that are connected to you. It's a self-policing um, kind of a list. If people become disinterested, they unsubscribe, you add new subscribers. But when you send that email, guess what? People are going to get it. Now, whether they open it, whether they click through, that's a different conversation. But you know that they're going to—it's going to be delivered at least. Um, 
So as opposed to if I were to just create an email, put an image in, and mm -hmm. write something, you know, and, and attach it, but mm -hmm. it shows the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that everybody gets that sometimes, so I guess if you have constant contact, then it does tell you who opens, right? Correct. That's no. You're exactly right. So you can exactly you can open up your, any your regular email. You can put a, mm -hmm. a photograph in there. You can write some copy. You can send it to a lot of people. Um, but it's always better to use one of these free platforms like Constant Contact or something. Yeah, because I'm concerned about it going into people's junk mail. Correct. Sometimes if it has an attachment, right? It can. Ex exactly. But, but Constant can. Contact would not go into junk mail. It, well, it, it, a lot of it can depend on the settings that the yeah. person has, but you know what the delivery rate is, right, and you know, yeah. and that you just have a lot more information. What I tend to do, and then, again, this all comes back to that, that concept of the conversation. I'll send out an email. Mm -hmm. I know exactly who's opened it. I know how many times they've opened it. Mm -hmm. I know who's clicked through, and I know what they've clicked through on. So three days later, I can send out a personal email to mm -hmm. someone that kept going back to this one page or where this one piece was. Wow. Um, and I don't say, I, I noticed that you've been looking at this piece three times. <laughs> you know, but you can just, you, but you can reach out. How do you know that? But you, pardon? How do you know that? Constant contact. You just from any, any of the email platforms, you can tell who's, yeah. where they're going. Oh, constant so, contact. You can trust it. Well, it, it, oh, it does. It's, it's that one. That one works. There's uh, yeah. 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 I actually use Mailchimp. Mailchimp. The best part of a Mailchimp is when you hit send. Little monkey comes out of your jacket. That's the best part. And it's free. It's free. So how frequently do pansies are known? If it doesn't have a tail, it's not a monkey. Even if it has one, it's sort of shape. My kids taught me that song. I'm sorry. How frequently do you send out to your family? It's a great question. So a lot, and I don't mind. It's a, it's a good question for, the, for this group too, because you know a lot of folks will say, "Hey, here's my April newsletter, or here's my May newsletter. I send something out every week." Right. But every week is not, here's 50 things to look through. It's usually about, it's maximum maybe three things. And sometimes it's one thing. Um, there's something, there's, I don't know how new it is, but the concept is, is around nurture marketing. It's this idea of, you can give somebody a boatload of information once a month, or you can kind of meter things out in a more digestible way. I'll give you an example. If we're talking about, well, everybody in this room, we're in open studios, how many monthly newsletters do you have between now and, and open studios? So I'm more, and maybe it's not weekly, maybe it's every other week, but it's starting to tell a story, starting to build momentum up to this compelling event. And that's, that's a phrase I haven't used yet this evening, this concept of, of we're in open studios as a compelling event. It's one point in time in your entire year uh, at, you know, as an artist trying to get your work out there, but it's this wonderful, thing that in marketing speak is a compelling event. It's something that you know, rally people around. Uh, get it, it helps you build your story. Like here's I'm preparing the space. Here's an image of me preparing the space. Here's the work I'm preparing. This is the new series. This is why I'm preparing it. And that's that lends itself to this kind of more metered thing. If we if, if we're posting if we're on Facebook and we're posting you know you know twice a day or at least once a day, a once a week email is not that onerous. And I would go further. The people that find it onerous, that's okay. No. I, it's the funniest thing because some people, some people would think like you know you, you open up your Mailchimp app and oh I got it unsubscribed today and you think you'd be like the piercing the heart. It's like no 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 I'm like my list just got cleaner, cleaner or more efficient. In other words, I yes. want people engaging yes. with my work that want to get it. Yeah. You know. It's like yay, I'm so, not a pest for them anymore. Well, yeah, exactly. And and, and and it's and that's and. and I've unsubscribed from I don't know how many different lists, and it happens all the time. It's it's nothing. Uh, it, it, it's all it's nothing personal. It's all or maybe it's completely personal. No. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> most of the personal thing there is, right? but uh, but it's it's this idea that you know you want to you want people to. It's like having someone on Facebook who doesn't care about art to see your work. They're not going to respond to it. Don't, don't worry about it. And, and or if your work is evolved, I mean, I have people on my list that that have been on my list since you know two thousand. Or something, and my work's changed, and, and different things happen, or maybe they're not uh, collecting art anymore, or what have you. There's any number of reasons why. I so, that so then, change. do you concern yourself with the fact that you have people on your list from all over the world, and there's only people locally who can go to open studios? Do, really, you, do you do something? It's like great. Yeah, a it's virtual. Great 
like goodie for them? Like Yes, so that's, it's a really great point. You always have to be very mindful of that, especially, yeah. you know, a lot of times you look like in, in my messaging, um, whether it's Facebook or anywhere, if you have connections all over the world, you might you might caveat your posts, like for those of you in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. For those of you outside the Bay Area, I'll be taking lots of photographs and, and, uh, and video. And if you want to be really adventurous, you can say, during Open Studios, I'll be running a live stream where I'm going to do a demonstration of my work process from 12 to 10. I said, I mean, you can do all kinds of cool things. But you're right, you have to be mindful of those folks. But I would go, I would say this, in the same way we were talking about this concept, this value of an actual photograph of Tom's work being shared, there's a value in people in Sydney mm -hmm. seeing that you have an opening in San Francisco that they could never physically get to. Why? Because you are no longer a flat 2D thumbnail of some watercolor or, or abstract piece or whatever it is. You're a, an artist that is showing with physical work that is endorsed enough to be in such and such space. You become more tangible, more real, more accessible. And they will ultimately, getting back to the, to the goal of the monetizing this, they're ultimately gonna feel more comfortable saying, yeah, I'll buy a print. I'll buy a print from you. And I actually had someone in Sydney who's collected a few pieces who had, three or four years ago made a trip to San Francisco. I actually got to meet him at one of the openings. It was the first time I had met him. And and it was great, you know. And, and then you'll have people that will collect your work that you'll you'll never you'll never uh, meet. But it's just uh, and getting back, you know, and this takes me back to the why. Some of the things that I sell, especially to folks that aren't, in the they're, they're these little prints. They're like they're like little uh, um, open edition prints for like twenty five dollars, and then I, I charge a little bit for shipping, and then I send them over. I'm not making a lot of money on this, but there's something gratifying about something that you create being seen in, in different places. And it's just... You do all your own fulfillment, too? Yeah. All your own what? Fulfillment. fulfillment like uh, shipping, yeah. printing, all that good stuff. Yes? I, I tend to do very diverse kinds of work. So, so you can look at one thing and say, you did that, Sure. and yeah. you did that. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it's realistic, some of it's abstract, some of it's multimedia. Yeah. How do you recommend putting that out? Right now, once in a while, I'll put out yeah. one. No, it's a great, it's a great question. I, th I think the, the diversity is strength unless you're applying to a particular show or gallery, and, and then you kind of have it's to get. It's part of who I am. Yeah, the diversity is fine. I mean, and a lot of, and, and, and I know a lot of you have, have practiced for some time, and, and you know, like an abstract for a jury show. You know, you submit the work that's in line with what the abstract is. Right. That's how you do it. And if you're approaching a gallery. Most galleries typically want to say, what's your voice as an artist? What's your voice as an artist for this gallery? And you're right, it creates a challenge. If you've got a lot of diverse work and you have a, what do you do on Facebook? What do you do on, and I think you do have to kind of embrace the idea of being fairly open with it, particularly with your profile page, right? You kind of have no choice. You have to be open with that diversity. Um, try to create a thread. Try to create a, a through line to the different pieces. Like you believe, I mean, you might have a, a, a number of different mediums but maybe in every single one you're trying to express joy, or in every single one you're trying to uh, express resistance, or you know whatever that is. But there's some thread that ties it together. Okay. Um, I have a lot of different. I have work that's digital. I have work that's abstract, and I have work that's you know mixed media, a little bit more representational, and, it, and it's all there. And it's just like what's the you know what's the common thread? And then when it gets into the, the advertising, like a Facebook business page, if you go down that path, that's a great example. Or Instagram, even for Instagram and not the paid stuff. Um, your ha your hashtag on Instagram is is abstract one time, and then maybe it's watercolors <laughs> the next time. And I think it's I think it's okay. The only time when being quote unquote all over the map is a problem is when you're trying to connect with a specific uh, show or a specific okay. gallerist, mm -hmm. and they're looking for clarity. They're well, yeah, for, if you're trying yeah. one for a show and they want something on fire, and you right. bring something on water, it's not going to work. You're in the next show. <laughs> uh, Tom, I read recently um, about using a series approach, mm -hmm. and I want your thoughts on that. Uh, like, for instance, a series of posts. A series of posts. No, a series. Um, for instance, uh, I do um, birch trees on linen, mm -hmm. but it's dissimilar from other things that I do. So I. Well, the short answer is short answer is absolutely. I mean, and, and I. And I uh, it's, it, it's, it's not off point to this discussion, it's, it's a good point. You create that kind of 
of clarity and consistency by defining things within a series. I mean, I certainly do that. And what's wonderful as an artist, especially if you love to explore different things, different different looks, different feels, different <coughs> mediums, it gives you the license to kind of experiment, and it gives you the ability to, com to intellectually compartmentalize it and to make it very clear yeah. to people like this is like I'm doing a flower power series to deal with the fact that I'm turning 50 this year. That's how I'm coping with it. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing something on the summer of love, and it's all flowers. And, and just a baby. Just a baby. Like you. Just a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are. Yeah, I, I wish I could be 50 again. <laughs> I, do you really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just a quick question on Instagram. I have one Instagram um, account, and I, um, I also like to do photography. Mm -hmm. So I started it out as a photo mm -hmm. site, but then mm -hmm. I'm interjecting some of my paintings now and then. Put your hashtag differently. Mm -hmm. Would you suggest having two different sites, uh, accounts, to keep the art separate from the photography? Even though it's hard to right. I think I think it depends on it depends on what if you, if you kind of look into the future, like what's your long term term goals to keep them both going for a long period indefinitely, okay. and you and from a from a. Uh, to use the word monetize, in terms of a, from a sales standpoint, do you truly want to have that defined uh, yeah. branding, as it were? Mm -hmm. uh, if it's, it, it's a hard question to answer, okay. but it's... Uh, I wonder if it's just confusing to it, people looking. I mean, it, it, can, it, you know, it can be... I think it's, I think it's fine. I, in, in terms of the... I think it's fine. Yeah, I really do. Unless you're... If, if you're... If, if you're really trying to go down a path and, 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 and sell a specific type of work, then you know you kind of stick to that. Um, if you're a practicing artist and you're and, and you're, oh, I'm pretty open about what I share too. It's kind of, it's it's. Uh, yeah, I, some I, people post, you know, what they eat and what they. You know. Well, I mean, that's a really good point. So so when it comes to when it comes to your art and what you post, all that, that's where you you can have some great control. And Facebook is a great example, um, where I would say like all the art related posts I tend to, to group as as public. So they can be shared for all thing. If it's if it's my nine year old in the school play, it's you know friends. There's different things you can do to kind of compartmentalize a bit. It doesn't go specifically to your question, but within your your personal profile page, there's things you can do. Yeah, on Facebook, uh, but on Instagram, it's all. Instagram's all in one feed, but in terms of the reach you're driving, you can drive that with the, the hashtag. That's right. Yes. Okay, so I have another question that seems like you haven't touched on this at all before. Um, I get on communication overwhelm, and I have this guilt that I'm not on other people's posts looking and commenting and appreciating, and sometimes it's even overwhelming for me to say, how many times do I have to thank you for saying my art's beautiful? <laughs> and I know, I know people say it's beautiful and I want to be, I'm really grateful, I am, but yeah. I go like, ah. Yeah, uh, well, I, I, I hear you, I mean, it's. So, I mean, and this is keeping me from being on social media. So sure. I don't want to just be a pusher. Right. Well, that's a, that's so, a fair okay, point. So, so that's a lot, so just respond now. No, no, I, <laughs> no, I, I take your point. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's in some ways it's a happy problem if people are reacting to your work like that. That's, that's great they love your work. Um, in terms of pushing things out, and this actually speaks to kind of this, this uh, one of the last areas I wanted to, to talk about, um, and specific to Moreno Studios, is, um, you, it's actually, you teed that up really perfectly, is you have an opportunity, you have all these wonderful artists that are participating this year, and you can authentically go out and identify something on the, the Real Series website that you like, and you can share it to your page. Um, and if people respond to it, then those people have to thank them. You don't have to thank them. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, but seriously, seriously, that's kind of, in terms of, okay, what are the, what are the physical, what are the material things that you can do you know, between now and Marine Open Studios, if, if you're so inclined to kind of support this whole thing for all of us to, to work together and kind of, you know, there's that cliche of a rising tide. The cliches usually become cliches for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, and if you can make sure that you're connected to the Marine Open Studios social media channels, mm -hmm. um, that they're aware of what you're doing actively, please feel free to reach out to me and, and we can do reciprocal um, follows. Um, but look at the, look at the art it's on, on the Open Studio site. And don't just say, today I have to share three pieces. No, not that at all. Find something, yeah, it's not like that at all. Find something that you like. Find something, like, I actually like this work. I'm gonna share it on, on, my, on my wall. That, that doesn't, the, my, my Facebook feed or you know, on Instagram. And that does a couple things. It, 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 it helps that person 
reach a few more people, gain some awareness. It kind of gives a break to your followers and, and you're not pushing your own stuff out all the time. And more broadly, it raises the awareness of the overall event. Um, a lot of what we talked about, there's the subtext of beha driving behavior. What are we trying to get people to physically do? Um, you know, sometimes we think in the virtual world, like obviously it's connected to, you know, go to this website and, and buy this work. Well, for Real Open Studios, it's physically getting people into your studio. Um, so that's something to consider between now and then. As you're posting things, it's not just about, oh, here's a new piece. It's, here's a piece that I'll have available at Open Studios. Um, Mention other things you're going to have, if you're going to do, if, depending on what kind of work you do, if you're doing caustics, if you do um, resin, if you do uh, whatever you're doing, if you have windows of time during weekends where you're going to actually be doing live painting or something, share that. But tie the story that you're building around this idea of people coming out to visit you. And I think you alluded to this kind of, do you have a virtual component? I think if you're, uh, if you're inclined to create a virtual component, and that virtual component of your open studio can be posting pictures of it. It doesn't have to be some fancy video thing. Um, that way you can invite people to participate that way. But really use Open Studios as this, com as this compelling event to drive a lot, drive your story, um, frankly. Um, and take it as an opportunity to get to know other artists in the community. I mean, uh, years ago I had this complete um, mistaken idea or perception that artists didn't collect art. Uh, That's not true. I know, yeah. They actually collect a lot of art. So what's funny is in this whole like you know rising, rising tide thing and promoting other artists and sharing, you're connecting with people that at their at their heart they love art, they love visual art, they like connecting. Um, and it's just it, it's just a it's an amazing thing. And that's and, they, and again there's different ways of getting. This is you know I, I want to open it up for any final questions too. But there's so many ways of getting paid in this world. And I love selling a piece of art. It makes me feel fantastic. But I love when someone just has a nice thing to say about a piece of work, or they have a reaction to it, or if I know that they're giving it as a gift to someone else, mm -hmm. or, they, or they just saw it and, and they, they, they appreciated it. That, that means something to me. It, it really does. And, and it, it doesn't have to be your reason. That's, that's I'm sure, my reason. As an artist, there are some artists that they are, they are fed by the expression of it. And they could care less what happens to it after it's out of them. And that's fine. That's all that's good too. But sorry. Do you keep your prices consistent between galleries and social media? Precisely consistent. They're identical. In other words, there's, and, and let me be and, and it depends on what you're doing. You know? For example, if you're doing additions, like I have some addition work and I have some standalone work. If you have standalone original pieces, you can have something in the same series that's in the ballpark but close between a gallery and online, and it works. If you're doing edition work, and you're selling something from the same edition, same composition, same edition size, the whole thing, in my opinion, the price has to be identical. And you know that from, with the gallery, you're taking a 50% hit. That's just the deal, though. That's the, because that's like a whole other talk. Like, how does the hybrid model of gallery and online work? To me, it works through uh, transparency, um, respect, and, and uh, another thing, there's a gentleman, uh, Matt McKinley, who r runs McKinley Art Solutions out of San Francisco, and he, his favorite line is respect the source. And if someone is, is a referral and that referral leads to a sale, you gotta, you gotta make good with them, whether it's a gallery or a person or whatever it is. Um, just always respect the source and that helps. But yeah, price, the, the, the prices have to line up because it's, when, when they don't, it's just, it's a problem, <laughs> it doesn't work. So I want to open it up for, I know we're almost uh, at the end of the time. Oh, I will uh, briefly say this. So, so again, that, that, that web link is just it's johncraft.com forward slash MOS. That'll get you to the, the core pages where you can find a bunch of information. Um, for, there's a whole Marine Open Studios page. Most, most, a lot of links off to resources that have already been established on the actual uh, Marine Open Studios website. But then there's also things like, you know, this is how you might post announcing you're participating. This is how I might work on Twitter, I might work on Instagram. Little examples. Um, oh, and, and, and of course I invite all of you to follow me too. You can kind of see some of the things I'm doing. Some of the things will make sense. Some of the things uh, you might think, oh, that's, that's crazy, what's he thinking? But, um, <laughs> but I, I, I want to thank all of you for, for showing up. Um, thank you. Regardless thank of how you. you feel about the marketing or the social media, it's just, it's great to see so many people who are not just interested in practicing their, their art creatively, but are interested in sharing it.